Round two, here we go. Eastern Conference. Uh, Boston and Tampa Bay. The toughest series for me to pick of the round two matchups. Uh, season series, Tampa Bay 3-1-0. and Boston 1-2-1. and Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, look at the stats. Goals for uh, Tampa Bay, I want to correct myself from earlier in the video, was the highest goals per game in the league. Washington, I believe, was two. Goals against uh, Tampa Bay, fairly decent. Uh, actually, pretty good. And Boston, the best. Uh, power play, both fantastic. Penalty kill, both pretty good. Uh, Boston, very good. So not both. Fair. What are you saying, Tom? Anyway, it's interesting uh, that the season series went the way it did. Uh, makes it a lot more interesting because uh, my first instinct would be just to uh, carry on with my original prediction, which was Boston. In I don't think I picked a games uh, for this one. But... Tampa Bay makes it very interesting with their uh, very good uh, season series against Boston. Oh, I'm going to stick with Boston. I'm going to say it's six or seven. I think the deciding factor, both teams, star power, fantastic, extremely deep. Uh, blue line's very good. I think the goaltending, it's Rask. A little, little bit uh, better playoff history. Vasilevsky very early on. Uh, he could put last year behind him. That would be a fantastic storyline if he did. Ah, uh, but I, I just that's 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 the uh, the thing that gets Boston over the edge for me. Tuukka Rask having a fantastic season. Tuukka Rask had a fantastic playoff last year. He's a good playoff goalie. I that's the edge. That's the edge right there. There's that's it. So yeah, Boston and we'll call it six. All right. Philly and Carolina, a very fun series. Uh, let's, right from the get-go, both teams will be coming out of the series tired. Uh, I predicted seven for each of their first-round series, I think. And Carolina and Philly, that's a fun matchup. It avoids the played-out, not played-out, but, you know, we've seen a lot of Washington-Pittsburgh. So it's fun to get uh, the other Metro teams, you know, really going uh, as playoff contenders. Carolina... Uh, as we talked about earlier, very good power play, uh, penalty kill, good power play, um, Philly, uh, respectable in both areas as well, uh, goals against, slight edge Philly, uh, goals for, eh, slight edge Philly, but Philly, uh, hotter team, uh, neither team has advantage on rest, um, so there's that, Carolina, Mm, struggled for parts of this year. I'm not a big fan of um, their their goaltending. It worries me. Uh, it worried me in the first round, but I think wash. You never. Like, I I didn't know what to do with Samsonov. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Hope he would would get an opportunity to start at the beginning. Well, I guess it depended on the season. Kept going, but um, here Philly's got an edge in goal. I think Carter Hart. He's playing fantastic. Otherwise, uh, scoring, very close. Defense, very close. It's another series where I think the goaltending, uh, just give it to Philly by the slimmest of margins in there. Uh, both teams have star power. Uh, Sebastian Ajo, uh, I don't know if you've heard of him. He's fantastic. Uh, and he needs to get more recognition as a star in this league. Because he's fantastic. And he scores, and he sets up, and he's a great skater, and a lot of things. Svechnikov on that top line with him. Yeah, they're pretty good, and they're really well coached. Everybody knows everybody would run through a wall for uh, Rob Brindamore. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. Philly, having gone through a coaching change, really responded well. The special teams do lean Carolina. This is another really, really, really tight series. I'm going to go with the hot team on this one. I'm going to go with Philly. Even with the layoff, they just felt like they got right. They got good, as gamers would say. You know. So, yeah, I'm going to give it to Philly. Very close. I'm going to say seven again. I like game sevens. What can I say? Uh, and also, I really like both of these teams. Uh, despite being an Islander fan, I think 
Oh, they're both extremely fun um, to watch come playoff time. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get Philly the edge. Uh, so the Eastern bracket uh, remains mostly the same. Uh, actually, yeah, mostly. Carolina getting out of the first round is the only difference this Okay, uh, for another uh, rematch of last year, we've got St. Louis and Dallas. Uh, St. Louis, last year, hard-fought series, get past Dallas in overtime of Game 6. Um, was it 6? Or was it 7? <clears throat> so it was 7 games. Oh, hair flip. <clears throat> Alright, you can cut this all out, James. Okay, it was a great 7-game series last year. It took... Uh, a, you know, weird bounce goal uh, for St. Louis to put it away. Although uh, they played extremely well in that game seven. Uh, Dallas, <laughs> Ben Bishop, man, he's so good. But, you know, they, they were really pushing it. They were pulling, you know, he was pulling a Tim Howard in 2014 World Cup. Stats favoring St. Louis in the scoring department. St. Louis keeps it close enough defensively that it looks pretty good for St. Louis at this point. Season series 3-0-1. St. Louis. Um, penalty kill doesn't kill St. Louis because for some reason Dallas is very close to them too. Power play, edge St. Louis. Going to give it to St. Louis. I know this is pretty quick, but given the, the season series went their way, uh, the numbers look their way, and just the Dallas, it runs out a little bit here. Uh, a little bit more scoring. I think they need more depth. Uh, I know they, they brought in Pavelski. They brought in Perry. Pavelski was pretty good. Perry, eh. Uh, hopefully they go in a little bit of a younger direction with some of those role players next year. Um, but those guys are also going to have to grow into it. So it's a tough situation as the GM. Um, yeah, got to fill uh, the depth because it's it's hard to uh, just be propelled uh, through the playoffs by one line. And um, yeah, uh, St. Louis, deeper. Goaltending is very, very close. I'm going to maybe give, eh, we'll call it a complete even uh, goaltending. Offense, St. Louis. Defense, Slight to Dallas. Yeah, we're going to give this one to St. Louis. Uh, a little bit deeper. Uh, Dallas. This is tough because, like I said earlier, man, they're one of those teams you're like, that's a tough out. But you know you know they will go out. It's just a matter of how hard they'll push. And they push very hard, but give it to St. Louis in six this time around. All right, almost done writing stats. So we got a series that was a little bit more interesting than what I initially thought. Uh, you know, I looked at the season series first off. Vegas 2-1-0, Edmonton 1-1-1. Not a ton to choose from there. Uh, pretty close. Vegas right on top of them, just barely uh, in goals per game. Goals against, pretty pretty close, slight edge. Vegas uh, power play, Edmonton specialty. Uh, and penalty kill. Now this is where... So initially, my first thoughts, oh yeah, Vegas. I'm very high on Vegas. Had them picked for the cup coming into the, the year. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, Vegas. But, man, uh, the, the edge that Edmonton has in special teams could be gigantic. And I'm sorry, Vegas. That would be excruciating after the special teams let them down last year uh, against San Jose. And the goaltending for... You know, your first thought is it's Flurry and it's uh, Leonard versus Koskinen. But Edmonton's done a good job of doing what the Islanders wish they could have done, which is insulate the goalie a little bit with how well the defense has played. And, oh man, uh, I think the PK catches up to Vegas in this one. And without Gallant there, I don't trust DeBoer to make the, the, the playoff adjustments. Maybe, maybe though, you could argue that having coached against Vegas and having taken advantage of the the Vegas penalty kill last year, maybe he could find a way to resurrect it in this year's playoffs. Um, wasn't a great start, as you can see by the stat, uh, in the regular season for him. I'm going to give this to Edmonton as like a power. I don't really see them as like a super, super awesome, fantastic team, but they put it together a little bit this year and they proved me wrong. Uh, and I... There's some deficiencies in Vegas' game that Edmonton could take advantage of. Now, you could also counter with uh, Mark Stone could, you know, 
amazing defensive forward, shut down McDavid maybe. That would be a matchup to watch. That would be a lot of fun. This would be a great series. Pacific Division showdown hopefully becomes, it's hard to become a rivalry. Not really much of a regional thing. But we're going to go with Edmonton. Yeah, Connor McDavid, first time in the conference finals. Yeah, let's go. And also, we're going to give it in six. Maybe seven if Vegas stays out of the penalty box. Round three. All right. We're going to stay in the West to start the conference finals. Yes, St. Louis and Edmonton. Not really the, uh, the first final I think a lot of people would pick. I think St. Louis will be there for a lot of brackets. I'm sure Colorado will get a lot of love. Uh, I could easily be wrong on that one. Um, 